come together in our first in Songs of Fellowship 393, warning has broken. Remember, no singing. <laughs> Let us come to God in prayer and let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you speak your word to us as you spoke it to the apostles long ago. Come, follow me. You call us as you called so many over the years. Come to me. All who are weary are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. You offer us, as you offer all your people, refreshment for our souls, promising that anyone who is thirsty can come to you and drink. Lord, we thank you for that invitation and gladly we respond. But more than that, we thank you that before anyone comes to you, you come to them first. You came to Peter, James and John by the lakeside to the hungry, the sick, and the outcasts in the streets of Galilee, to Mary Magdalene weeping in the garden, to two weary disciples walking the Emmaus Road, to the apostles trembling behind closed doors, to Saul breathing murder on the road to Damascus, and to countless other sins. Always it is you who makes the first approach, calling your people to faith, Open your eyes to your presence and lead us forward in your service until that day when, with all your people, we enter your kingdom and meet you face to face. In, you, in your name we ask it as we come to you with the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. There's two, got two short readings this morning. The first one is from Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 18 to 25. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two brothers who were fishermen, 
Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew catching fish in the lake with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me and I will teach you to catch men. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat with their father, Zebedee, getting their nets ready. Jesus called them, and at once they left the boats and their father and went with them. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Since you have accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, live in union with him. Keep your, re- your roots deep in him. Build your lives on him and become stronger in your faith as you were taught and be filled with thanksgiving. See to it then that no one enslaves you by means of worthless deceit of human wisdom, which come from the teachings handed down by men and from the ruling spirits of the universe and not from Christ. For the full content of the divine nature lives in Christ in his humanity, and you have been given full life in union with him. He is supreme over every spiritual ruler and authority. Amen, and may God bless these readings from his word. I was reminded recently that Jesus only talked once during his ministry of being born again, but spoke of the need to follow him on innumerable occasions. There is an important point behind that observation, for there is a danger sometimes of making the moment of commitment all important and forgetting that discipleship is or should be an unfolding journey. Peter and Andrew, together with the rest of the apostles, followed Jesus without second thoughts of what they were leaving behind, not knowing what Jesus was calling them to or where that their response might lead. The disciples responded in faith, trusting that he would guide them, and apart from Judas, they kept on following, even when it led to sacrifice hostility, rejection, and the death of their master on the cross. I'm sure we all wonder at times where God is leading us. Young people might struggle with their identity and feel they have no sense of direction in life, even when they are brimming with talent. We all come to crossroads in our lives due to changes in health, loss of a job, retirement, family changes, or other, other issues. And it is then that we need to put our trust in God and follow his direction. Even the apostles had faith faith had its limits, of course, on the night of Gethsemane, each briefly failing to follow. It needed the risen Christ to greet them once more, speaking his words of peace and reaffirming his call before they felt able to continue the journey. We too will encounter moments when our commitment is tested and we no longer follow as we should. But Jesus will always be there, summing us forward along the road of discipleship. Committing ourselves to Christ is a necessary step for all of us, whether that involves a dramatic experience of conversion or a gradual coming to faith. It is only a first step. Don't mistake it for more. There was a time when I had the delusion of mastering the game of golf. I dreamed of achieving a reasonable standard, maybe aspiring to a single-figure handicap, but sadly, my skill never matched that, my enthusiasm. To put it bluntly, I was never going to be good, although I did still do enjoy the exercise. Instead of my shot soaring down the fairway, my ball would veer off mainly to the right, occasionally to the left, sometimes bumbling up the fairway and ending in, a, in a variable, ending in a divot. And if there was a water hazard, I would definitely find it. What was my problem? Well, there was probably many, but one was the inability to follow through on my shots. Those who are go- golfers will know what I mean. If you don't, 
ask a golfer later. That's not me because I don't play now. <laughs> it is probably the same with more sports we try. We all think we are going to master them, but we all tend to forget to follow through on all that is required to make us competent at them, never mind good. It is the same with life and faith. It's easy enough to start something, a different matter to finish it. So often we start full of enthusiasm, only then to lose interest. Many like mice commit to Christ, impulsively responding to the message of the gospel, but soon they realize that they have taken on more than they first anticipated. Is that true of us? We have professed our faith in Christ and started on the journey of discipleship, but that finally is not what counts. What matters is whether we complete the course, whether having put our hands to something, we are ready to follow it through. Imagine what it must have been like to have been one of the people of Israel during the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Many, no doubt, must have thought their flight from Egypt would be short, swiftly leading on to an, end, an exciting and somewhat uncertain future. The real reality, however, was that a lifetime's journey lay ahead, living as nomads in search of the promised land. Precisely where that was and when they would get there seemed hidden even from Moses. <coughs> Yet, though the final destination was unclear, the route they had to take was not a matter of guesswork, for God was there to guide them. Just as he led Abraham, so now through a pillar of cloud and fire he directed their footsteps. They did not travel alone. God was travelling with them. Few are privileged to receive such a clear sign of God's presence with them, but the principle is one that applies to each of us. As we journey through our life, God is always there to share our pilgrimage, leading, encouraging, equipping, and providing. We have no more idea where, where our faith will take us than Abraham or Moses had, but we have the insurance that wherever we ask to travel, he will travel with us. Here's a question for you. What are you most scared of? Spiders? Snakes? The dark? Possibly even all of these. According to those who claim to know, there is one thing probably all of us are scared of still more than that. And that, quite simply, is the unknown. Familiar, familiarity may be contempt, but also brings a sense of security. And the thought of venturing out into uncharted waters can be a daunting challenge that most of us prefer to avoid. It can be traumatic enough moving to a new house, starting a new job, or even retiring. And any change more radical than these can be bewildering indeed. This, though, was a challenge that, challenge that faced Abraham. Comfortably settled in the town of Haran, he suddenly felt a call to move on. The destination was un unclear, as were any details as to what he might find when he reached it. This was to be a big step into the unknown, a journey of faith. Few of us today will be asked to make a bold decision, yet there are times when, you, when we need to let go of the tried and tested, nonetheless. We may be called to new venture, new responsibilities or a new lifestyle, not knowing where these might lead or what they will demand of us. We may be asked to make new friends, Embrace, embrace new ideas or explore new higher horizons that once again we have no way of quantifying. Will we be ready to respond if we leave, believe God is speaking? Not putting off a decision to weigh up all the implications or brushing aside what we would rather not hear, but following in faith. We may not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds it. Let that be sufficient inspiration for us. The Christian life is demanding sometimes. We start off thinking it's plain sailing, 
but suddenly unexpected obstacles appear in our path. At times we can feel like giving up, but we have the example of those who have gone before us to inspire us onwards and a responsibility to future generations to lead the way in turn. Whether the race is easy or hard, we need to persevere, looking to Jesus and the joy set before us. If we want to follow Jesus, we have to put our trust and faith in God. We have to persevere no matter what is put in front of us. The road to Jesus is long and straight, and we need to make sure that we remain on the chosen route and not veer off with the temptations that are constantly put in front of us. Following God is not easy, but the, war, the rewards at the end are more than we can imagine. It is up to us to make sure we listen and to follow God's plan for us. Let us come together now in a prayer for others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you spoke and you brought hope, comfort and renewal. You touched and you brought love, peace, healing and wholeness. Come now and speak again, bringing your word of life to all who suffer or are hurting. Reach out afresh. Bring your touch of love to all those whose hearts are aching and to cry out for help. Where there is despair and turmoil, may your voice renew. Where there is pain and sickness, may your hand restore. Lord Jesus Christ, you came once, you shall come again. But we ask you, come now and minister to your grace. For your name's sake, amen. I'm now going to hear Ken playing our next hymn, Songs of Fellowship 1030, The Lord's My Shepherd. I should stand now for the benediction. Lord, help us in our efforts to follow your path. Keep us from straying off the path when temptation lures us, so that we may live in harmony with you and the route you have planned for us. And may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us both now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>